According to political and cultural commentator David Brooks, the foundation of a healthy person, community, or society lies in the ability to see others deeply, making them feel valued and understood. In How to Know a Person, Brooks offers a comprehensive guide to understanding and connecting with people on a deeper level. He explores the crisis of isolation in society and promotes empathy and consideration as tools to bridge gaps in our fragmented society. Emotional Barriers David Brooks grew up in a reserved Jewish family where love was present but not overtly expressed. As a result, he was emotionally detached and aloof, often observing others rather than engaging with them. He preferred solitary activities like writing. His emotional detachment continued into college and adulthood, making it difficult for him to connect with others on a deeper level. However, experiences such as becoming a father and enduring life's hardships, such as broken relationships and public failures, began to soften his emotional barriers. He started to value understanding others' perspectives and emotions, leading him on a journey towards self-improvement. Being open-hearted is crucial for human connection, but it's not enough. People also need social skills. These include knowing how to disagree without damaging relationships, revealing vulnerability at the right pace, and being a good listener. These skills are essential yet overlooked in our society, which focuses more on career preparation than interpersonal relations. Seeing and understanding others is important for personal growth as well as societal harmony. Diminishers are people who make others feel small, while illuminators are those who show genuine interest in others and help them feel valued. Brooks strives to be an illuminator, someone who can truly see other people and make them feel understood. Many people are not as skilled at understanding others as they believe, often misjudging or misunderstanding them. Truly seeing and understanding others is not just about mastering techniques, but also about adopting a way of life. Egotism, anxiety, naive realism, essentialism, and having a static mindset are tendencies that prevent us from accurately perceiving others. People often don't see others because they are too self-centered or have so much anxiety in their own heads that they can't hear what's going on in other people's heads. The belief that your perspective of the world is the objective one is known as naive realism. Essentialism is the human tendency to make generalizations about groups of people. A static mindset is when people have an old idea of you and don't recognize the changes you've gone through. It's like when your parents still see you as a child, even though you've grown up. Truly seeing another person is challenging. We must improve our ability to see people and give them a sense of being heard, seen, and understood. It's easy to misunderstand someone close to you. Vivian Gornick's memoir Fierce Attachments 1987 discusses the complex relationship between her and her mother Bess. Despite their constant communication, they struggle to truly understand each other. Vivian feels unseen by her mother and is affected deeply by her mother's anxiety and depression. As Bess ages, their relationship softens slightly as they both become more aware of mortality. However, Vivian remains frustrated with her mother's lack of self-awareness and refusal to take responsibility for the impact she has on others. Even when we are devoted to someone and know a lot about them, it is still possible not to truly see them due to our own biases or preoccupations. The Illuminating Gaze Being an illuminator means seeing others in all their fullness. This requires skills such as sensitivity towards others' moods and thoughts and active curiosity about their experiences. You also need to have an affectionate regard for them as individuals with infinite value and dignity, generosity of spirit in defining them beyond surface appearances or societal labels and holistic understanding that resists oversimplification or reductionism. Dr. Ludwig Gutmann, a German Jew who escaped Nazi Germany in 1939, revolutionized care for paraplegics through his generous spirit. He was employed by a British hospital for wounded troops. When he first started working there, the hospital heavily sedated patients and kept them confined to their beds. Gutmann, however, cut back on the sedatives, forced them out of bed, and started throwing balls at them and organizing games to get them active. His generosity of spirit eventually led to the establishment of the Paralympic Games in 1960. Seeing people well is an ethical ideal that requires effort, but ultimately enriches our lives by deepening our connections with others. According to educator Parker J. Palmer, our approach to others shapes our character. Philosopher and novelist Iris Murdoch asserts that morality is about how we pay attention to others. 
Instead of abstract universal principles as the basis for morality, we should rely on personal encounters and daily interactions. We need to see people accurately and treat them justly because evil arises from a failure to recognize personhood in others. Mary Piffer, a therapist and author, is an example of giving people just and loving attention. Piffer approaches therapy by engaging in genuine conversations with her patients. She believes being a therapist is about paying attention, a form of pure love, rather than just providing solutions. In her therapy practice, she adopts a positive and charitable viewpoint, trying to understand each person's perspective sympathetically. Unlike some therapists who may blame families for issues, Piffer recognizes the importance of families, even in their imperfections. She aims to steer people toward forgiveness and positive thinking. Accompaniment. Play, other-centeredness and presence characterize accompaniment. It's about being present with other people in a relaxed, attentive manner without trying to lead or direct them. This requires patience, respect for the person's pace and boundaries and playfulness, which allows for spontaneous communication and deeper connection. Bonding through shared experiences and mutual respect is important. Writer Gail Caldwell recounts in her memoir, Let's Take the Long Way Home, how her close friendship with a woman named Caroline was forged through shared experiences. They spent hours together training their dogs in the woods. The bond they built through dog training became a foundation for trust and mutual understanding. As they engaged in shared activities, their intimacy deepened from mutual caution to inseparable ease. It's also important to support another person's journey without controlling it or being a passive bystander. Brooks experienced a failed attempt at accompaniment with his son's baseball team due to his ego-driven desire to control. His son's coach wasn't as experienced as he was, so Brooks started giving him a lot of coaching ideas. The coach felt threatened and his relationship with Brooks turned into a subtle power struggle, losing the warmth it could have had. Accompaniment often requires surrendering power and enabling others to make their own decisions. During difficult times, accompaniment also requires presence. For example, a Yale student named Jillian Sawyer, whose father died of pancreatic cancer, experienced profound support during a friend's wedding. When she went to the restroom to have a cry during the father-daughter dance, everyone from her table was waiting by the door, offering silent, affirming hugs without trying to awkwardly validate her grief. Perspectives. In 2004, French writer Emmanuel Carrer and his girlfriend Haleen lived through a tsunami while vacationing in Sri Lanka. He and other survivors formed a small community connected by grief but separated by their individual experiences. He had met another French family earlier, Jérôme, Delphine, and their daughter Juliette. Juliette did not survive. For Jérôme, the tsunami launched him on a desperate mission to help his wife. The moment he heard of his daughter's death, he knew that his only job was to save Delphine. For Delphine, the task was simply to withstand the blow. This situation forced Carer out of his self-absorption as he became part of others' journeys. The two families navigated the devastation together. Carer initially perceived himself as a solitary, loveless man. Following the tsunami, he learned to empathize with others and their perspectives, leading him to see Haleen in a new light. He realized his deep affection for her and resolved to spend his life with her. People experience events differently based on their personal histories and how these events impact them. Our interpretation of reality is subjective and can change dramatically following significant events. This story illustrates the concept of constructionism. Each person actively constructs their perception of reality based on their experiences, beliefs, traumas, and desires, making each person's worldview unique. Truly understanding someone else requires stepping into their point of view and understanding how they construct their reality. Good conversations. Understanding others deeply can be achieved through meaningful conversations. Being a good conversationalist is not about telling funny stories or offering insightful comments, but about fostering a two-way exchange leading towards mutual understanding. To improve conversation skills, treat attention as an on-off switch. This means that, as a listener, you treat attention as all or nothing. Favor familiarity to get a conversation rolling. People love to hear and talk about things that are familiar. Make the other person the author of their story by asking them for details about specific events or experiences. Looping means repeating what someone just said for clarity. This helps you realize how often you are interpreting people incorrectly. You should also adopt the midwife model. 
This means assisting others in their process of deliberation by making the person feel safe and prodding them to encourage deeper honesty. If you run into a disagreement, keep the gem statement at the center of the conversation. This refers to the truth underneath the disagreement. It's something you both agree on. If you can both return to the gem statement during a conflict, you can keep the relationship between you strong. Don't shift attention back to yourself instead of focusing on others' experiences. The goal is to make deep listening less rare in life. Asking the right questions in conversations is also a vital skill. David Bradley, a friend of Brooks, uses index cards to help people analyze their problems by asking them about their goals, skills, and daily routines. This method has helped many people gain perspective on their issues. Bradley's skill in asking insightful questions has contributed to his success in business and hiring talented individuals. Good questioning is a moral practice as it demonstrates humility and respect for others. Evaluative questions often judge others or limit responses. We need open-ended queries that allow the respondent to control the conversation's direction. Use big questions during conversations with acquaintances or friends to prompt deeper discussions. These can include inquiries about personal crossroads, fears, future celebrations, and life. Societal norms discourage deep questioning due to privacy concerns or fear of making conversations too heavy, but people are often more willing to engage in profound discussions than we assume. Hard conversations. There is a crisis of connection in society, with political animosities, technological dehumanization, and social breakdown leading to a rise in depression, suicide, and loneliness. People are spending less time with friends and more time alone. There is also an increase in hostility and callousness, with hate crime reports surging to their highest levels in 12 years in 2021. This social breakdown has resulted in a crisis of distrust, with fewer people believing that others can be trusted. Loneliness can lead to bitterness and meanness, causing people to lash out when they feel unrecognized or disrespected. The root cause of this social crisis is moral failure, Society has not taught individuals how to treat each other with kindness, generosity, and respect. Schools have abandoned moral formation in favor of preparing for career success, which has contributed significantly to this issue. The societal shift towards prioritizing financial success over moral and social skills has led to a culture of disconnection and cruelty. We need to understand others on a personal level while acknowledging the influence of social categories like ideology, class, race, faith, and identity. It's important to see individuals as unique entities within their social contexts. Brooks has encountered diverse perspectives filled with anger, bitterness, and distrust as he traveled across the country. He has experienced difficult conversations across differences and power inequalities. During a panel discussion in 2022 about culture wars, he felt powerless due to his lack of lived experience regarding racial issues. He was a white man talking about race with a black woman who had spent her career writing and thinking about this issue. From this experience and further research, he learned that every conversation takes place on two levels, the official topic and the actual conversation. The official conversation is the words we say. The actual conversation involves the underlying emotions that are communicated when we speak. You either increase the other person's sense of safety or increase their sense of threat with each remark you make. The success or failure of the conversation depends on whether each comment fosters safety and respect. Conversations also exist within frames, representing the purpose and goals. Aligning with the other person's frame, especially in emotionally charged discussions, shows respect and aids in smoother communication. This helps us fully understand their perspective. Ken is a word used by the Scots that refers to stepping into someone else's perspective to show respect and foster mutual understanding. Individuals lower in a power structure often have a more comprehensive understanding of a situation than those higher up. Hard conversations also have a tendency to devolve into personal attacks or labeling, which can derail the discussion. To prevent this, try stepping back from conflict, clarifying motives, re-identifying mutual purposes, and using ruptures as opportunities for a deeper connection. People's perceptions of reality are shaped by their personal experiences and capabilities. While it's impossible to fully understand someone else's experience, developing skills to see and hear others can build trust and respect. Navigating Trauma Brooks's friend Pete, an accomplished eye surgeon, suffered from severe depression. 
Despite outward appearances of a happy life, Pete was haunted by childhood trauma and depression eventually consumed him. Brooks initially struggled to understand the severity of Pete's condition. He offered advice and positive reframing, which he later learned could exacerbate feelings of isolation in depressed individuals. Over time, he realized the importance of simply being present for Pete, acknowledging his pain without trying to fix it. Pete's depression remained unrelenting, although he received professional help and had a supportive family. Brooks felt powerless during this time. He regrets not being able to offer more comfort. Pete committed suicide in 2022. Understanding someone with depression requires recognizing their altered perception of reality. Childhood events have a significant influence on adulthood. From birth, children seek answers to fundamental questions about safety, love, and self-worth. These early experiences shape their perceptions and behaviors in adulthood. Relationships and mental health can be negatively impacted by emotional wounds that are passed down through generations. A warm family environment is necessary for future success and well-being. In response to harsh childhood circumstances, we develop defense mechanisms such as avoidance, deprivation, overactivity, and passive aggression. These defenses are often unconscious but deeply influence our interactions with the world. However, these models can become outdated or limiting in adulthood, leading to personal crises. While introspection is often considered a solution for self-improvement, communication is more effective in addressing these deep-seated issues. Individuals coping with past traumas require empathic companions. Empathy is a set of social and emotional skills that involve mirroring, mentalizing, and caring. Mirroring is the act of accurately catching the emotion of the person in front of you. Mentalizing involves understanding why someone is experiencing what they are experiencing based on our own experiences and memories. Caring involves understanding that what another person needs may be different from what we would need in that situation. Empathy originates from the body, with emotions being communicated through facial expressions and body language. People vary widely in their ability to project empathy, with some having high emotional granularity, the ability to finally distinguish between different emotional states, while others have low granularity. Highly empathic people enjoy deeper relationships, exhibit more charitable behavior towards those around them, and show higher degrees of nonconformity and social self-confidence. High empaths are individuals with exceptional social skills and heightened sensitivity to emotional subtleties. These individuals can effectively identify and respond to the emotional needs of others. Empathy is an innate disposition that can be enhanced through practices such as close observation of others, participation in drama programs to widen your repertoire of perspectives, reading literature, and dealing with personal suffering. Empathetic people can physically influence each other's emotional states through co-regulation. According to Columbia University physician and researcher Martha Welch, co-regulation is when two people who trust each other can communicate from body to body. They physically calm each other's viscera, co-modulate each other's heart rates, and produce what she calls higher vagal tone, a comprehensive state that occurs when your innards feel secure and serene. How suffering shapes us. Suffering and loss can profoundly change a person's perspective on life. Understanding someone's grief involves knowing how they have processed their loss. Being a good friend or person requires accompanying someone through this process. In 1936, when novelist Frederick Buechner was 10 and his brother was 8, they lost their father to suicide. The shock and grief were initially too overwhelming to face, causing the family to suppress their emotions and avoid discussing the tragedy. As they grew older, the brothers began to grapple with their father's death and its impact. They embarked on a journey of self-discovery, exploring their own identities and seeking understanding about their father's life and motivations for his suicide. This process involves sharing stories, reflecting on past experiences, and engaging in deep conversations with friends about grief and personal growth. Character building is not an individual endeavor, but rather a communal process that involves connecting with others in meaningful ways. Facing your pain can lead to profound personal transformation and deeper connections with others. Understanding our personalities. Understanding a person's personality is crucial to understanding them as individuals, and this applies to everyone we meet. Diverse personalities are needed in a healthy society, with different people serving different roles. George W. 
Bush's extroverted nature leads him to take bold actions, and his lack of curiosity keeps him from considering other perspectives. These traits influenced his decision to start the Iraq War. Dispositional signatures are habitual ways of interpreting situations based on our personality traits. Every personality trait enables its bearer to serve the community in a valuable way. Our public understanding of personality is flawed. This is evident in the popularity of the scientifically invalid Myers-Briggs personality test over the more reliable Big Five personality traits. Extroversion, conscientiousness, neuroticism, agreeableness, and openness. Extroverts seek positive emotions and social approval. Conscientious people are disciplined and organized. Neurotic individuals respond strongly to negative emotions. Agreeable people are cooperative and kind, and open individuals seek new experiences and ideas. These traits can have both positive and negative effects. For example, while extroverts may be fun to be around, they may also be prone to anger or risky behavior. Similarly, while conscientiousness can lead to success in school or work, it can also lead to workaholism or rigidity. Understanding these traits allows us to better understand ourselves and others. Personality traits have an influence on life outcomes. Their predictive power is comparable to that of ek or socioeconomic status. Understanding a child's personality traits enables effective parenting. Parenting styles need to adapt to suit individual children's personalities. Personality traits can be developed over a lifetime, and people generally improve with age. The developmental stages. According to developmental psychology, we go through different life tasks or stages from childhood to adulthood. Life tasks are stages of personal growth and development. Agency is established in early life, social identity in adolescence, and career consolidation in adulthood. Each stage is associated with a specific state of consciousness. The stages are imperial or self-centered consciousness during childhood when self-interests are paramount, interpersonal consciousness during adolescence when social acceptance is crucial, and institutional consciousness during adulthood when we seek to make a difference in society. These stages can impact relationships and personal development. For example, an adult stuck in an imperial mindset might struggle with intimacy due to self-centeredness while someone with an interpersonal mindset might struggle with independence due to their reliance on external validation. Understanding personality traits in developmental stages can provide valuable insights into human behavior and personal growth. Lyndon Johnson's father was an idealist and a romantic. He faced financial setbacks after losing the family ranch. This event shaped Johnson into a man skeptical of romanticism and trust. He became an accurate vote counter in the Senate by focusing on people's interests rather than their words. The career consolidation stage is where individuals often develop a more individualistic mindset and become better at self-control. However, this phase can lead to detachment from deep relationships and emotions. The pursuit of career success can eventually feel unsatisfying as people yearn for spiritual fulfillment. The generative life task often happens in middle age, and it is when people aim to serve the world. Many people adopt a generative mindset when they are promoted to a leadership position. According to developmental psychologist Eric Erickson, the final life task is achieving integrity or enduring despair in the face of death. This stage is marked by a strong desire for learning and wisdom, but also involves confronting regret over past mistakes. Throughout these life tasks, individuals undergo significant changes in consciousness that they may not fully recognize or understand until later stages in their lives. Stories. Personal narratives and storytelling help us understand our identities and connect with others. Crafting an accurate life story is crucial for leading a meaningful life. Some people view life as a quest where they undertake transformative journeys in pursuit of goals. Most Americans tell redemption stories, seeing their lives as a series of hardships from which they emerge stronger. We often shoehorn our lives into neat, linear stories of decision and commitment. However, lives are not linear, but are filled with breaks and false starts. Therapists play a role in helping individuals refine their life stories. People construct more accurate narratives as they age, becoming more aware of their strengths, weaknesses, and recurring behavioral patterns. Talking to strangers often leads to memorable exchanges. Shifting from a paradigmatic mode or analytical thinking to a narrative mode or storytelling when engaging with others allows for a deeper understanding of their unique experiences. 
People are often eager to be seen and understood. Ask them to tell you their stories, culture, and wisdom. People are unique entities shaped by their cultural backgrounds and personal experiences. Culture, inherited from our ancestors, influences our perspectives and behaviors. Different cultures perceive and interact with the world differently. Past societal norms continue to influence present-day attitudes. While we inherit certain cultural aspects, we are also co-creators of our culture, selectively embracing or rejecting parts of it. Understanding someone involves exploring their cultural background and seeing how they embrace or challenge it. This approach helps us move beyond stereotypes and gain a deeper understanding of individuals in their entirety. Brooks's understanding of wisdom has shifted from the traditional view of a wise person as a sage dispensing advice. Instead, he sees wisdom as deeply understanding people and their stories. True wisdom lies in helping others process their thoughts and emotions, creating a safe space for them to navigate life's complexities. Receptivity is necessary. This involves creating an atmosphere where people can be honest with themselves. In her book, Maybe You Should Talk to Someone, therapist Lori Gottlieb describes how she patiently helped a self-absorbed man named John reveal his hidden traumas. She navigated his rude and dismissive behavior and focused on establishing a relationship. Gottlieb gently prodded John to make him curious about himself, asking questions at a comfortable pace for him. As John's story unfolded, Gottlieb discovered he had been hiding the trauma of his mother's death since he was six. Patience, attentiveness, trust-building, and challenging self-deceptions help us gain deep insights into others' lives. Wisdom is practiced within relationships or systems of relationships, forming what educator Parker Palmer called a community of truth. This community can be formed in different contexts like classrooms or coffee shops. A community of truth is created when people are genuinely interested in seeing and exploring together. Despite years spent studying how to see others deeply and be deeply seen, Brooks still struggles with ego control and diffidence. However, he notes improvements such as being more vulnerable, open, approachable, and kinder. He has gained more self-confidence when approaching strangers or friends due to his increased understanding of humanity. An illuminator someone who sees others deeply is a blessing to those around them because they understand human frailty and folly while accepting conflict with curiosity and respect.